So we are on this wonderful episode of Beyond the Comfort Zone. I have here CEO of Printform, Malu Kapi, and uh, joining us today and talking to us about his entrepreneurship and leadership. Thank you for joining us, Malu. Thanks, Avi. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I know we were just talking about your business and how you got to print form and all of that. Can you just tell our audience a little bit about what print form does, what type of manufacturing? Sure. Uh, print form is a, you know, a prototype to production that itself is a punchline. So we help customers, uh, you know, who come with a new design uh, with their prototype needs um, to the stage where they go act to actual production. So um, the classic example would be, um, let's say any automotive industry, which is planning uh, parts for the new electric car might come with a new complex or just a need-based part. And that's where we come in and help them. And then once they come back with maybe 10 more parts, then we still exist. And once it goes to actual mass manufacturing, that's when you know we, we don't have a role to play, then it goes to their ancillaries or they do it in-house. So we cater to different industries uh, from automotive, uh, aerospace, uh, consumer products, um, robotics, um, and um, oil and gas. So we pretty much cover all the industries which basically need any manufacturing and prototyping part. That's very exciting. So you get to be on the front end of many new products. Yep. <laughs> we get to see the first. Awesome. Um, and Printform was founded in 2017, correct? Right, of December, yep. Mm -hmm. And um, can you tell us just a little bit about its growth and history? Yes, we started in 2018. We went uh, live in April of 2018. And uh, I brought in the seed money uh, to start all the operations. Uh, we started with typically any other startup would do uh, bootstrap, I brought in some people from the industry, um, brought in different uh, subject matter experts to start the uh, company and then uh, started, had an office in uh, uh, Alfreda, started with Regis, um, easy plug and play, and uh, started with uh, like a combination of different softwares to use online to track the CRM. We started with Salesforce. Uh, for the accounts, we started to use uh, QuickBooks, uh, and different platforms for digital marketing. And uh, uh, beyond 2018 of August, that's when we um, started to uh, get actual customers. Um, so we ended the year with half a million dollar in the next eight months, that was for entire of 2018. And uh, you know, uh, from there on, uh, business has been good, growing, and uh, we almost grown about 400% in the last four years. So that's where we are. And, uh, and we continue to grow at least about more than 50% to 100% every year. That's absolutely incredible. Hopefully some of uh, your secrets for fast growth can be shared to other leaders who are watching this. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we, I, we believe in scaling more than you know, uh, growth. And that's been our mantra. Uh, you know, that's a term we use in India. That's a secret, uh, what do you call, ingredient uh, to focus more on scaling, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that brings in a lot of innovation. So that's our strength. Now, what would you say is a common myth about your field of expertise? That uh, it's um, uh, very new. Uh, people are still not um, aware of what happens in the LED manufacturing or 3D printing world. Uh, I think people are aware, but they always get confused between, uh, when you say 3D printing, they think that we are like any other printing company, which makes, you know, either brochures or, you know, that's the myth, what we come across in most of the times. When we, the moment we say, oh, print form. So you do printing, right? So then we say, no, 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 we do printing, but we use 3D printing as a technology and forming is we form the part. So it's a technology used to form the part. So that's when, you know, people say, oh, okay, now we understand. So that's a, you know, we always come across that because we, when we say printing, then people think it's different printing. Yeah, the assumption is still 2D for about everything. Yep. <laughs> What would you say is the biggest challenge that your business or industry is facing right now? I think that it's totally uh, getting involved with the technology, right? So COVID, what it did was it did affect a lot of industries which would do innovations like, you know, aerospace and, uh, you know, but it opened up other markets like consumer products where a lot of healthcare companies started to do research and 
what should be the new you know ways of uh, working around the covid you know so uh, i think the the data is there i think it's more moving towards how do we use this data so even in this industry people have started to realize that um, you know uh, rpa or machine learning ai is the way to go right so technology is going to be driven even in this industry as well mm -hmm. And tell me, you know, a leader such as yourself um, found this company. Tell me about the most influential person in your life and how they impacted you into who you are today. I think it's uh, not just one person, right? So I keep telling people, you know, when I reach out to, uh, I'm on the board of uh, a couple of networking, uh, like the CEO council in Atlanta. I'm part of, uh, I'm on the board of uh, Thai, which is again a networking group. Um, and these people are very successful, right? They've done well and um, I'm on both sides. Sometimes I'm talking to them as a, you know, mentor and sometimes I'm talking to them as a, you know, entrepreneur. So it depends on what platform we are in. So what I tell usually people is that I look up for friends more than mentors, right? So your mentors are your friends because first they have to listen to you without <laughs> commenting anything on how it should be done. And that's where that comfort zone is. So I think I have more people, like if you look at, um, uh, Thai itself. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a network of people like Sid Mukherjee who has done very well, sold companies. Uh, he's the name in the retail world today in startups, like he's tied up with ATDC, Georgia Tech, you name it, um, you know, Tech Village. So they're, they're, they're people who are there. So he is there, a brand name, Raj Palaniswamy, who's again been very successful with what he does. Um, you know, of course, there are a lot of people whom I reach out to. I just don't hesitate talking to anybody right so i think uh, that's that's my strength is that i don't feel afraid to ask people hey am i doing it correctly what do you think so taking your opinion is always important so it becomes difficult for me to say that i just look at somebody as one person who can help me versus mm -hmm. you know i try to network with people and see what is their strength right or learn from a couple of things which they think that we should not be doing right so, you know, that I think that's that's how I as an entrepreneur look at things, you know, maybe maybe I'm a little different than the rest, but <laughs> I think that's it. It separates us, uh, right, as each individual. Well, it sounds like you value you collective knowledge and wisdom yeah. from others. <laughs> yep, yep. That's important, right? So uh, it's very difficult to have in 1%, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, if you look at all the successful people, whether it's... Uh, Bill Gates, uh, you know, or just Jeff Bezos, each one of them have their own, right, journeys, right? So you can learn, pick up the best thing. And I'm sure when you try to connect with your story, there is always that dot which gets connected when you listen to those. Like I was listening to yesterday on Friday uh, to the CEO of uh, Greenlight, right? So uh, I was able to connect like how, you know, exactly he was looking out for partners and how he, the network helped and how you know people like ATDC, Thai came into picture. So it's the same path we are all taking in different ways, but ultimately the success is something which gets there depending on the, you know, how focused you are, how passionate you are uh, in that journey. Excellent. I'm curious, if you could go back and tell your 18 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Succeed uh, at an early age in entrepreneurship. Um, you, you, it's good to take risk uh, when you're in your, you know, either late twenties or early twenties, uh, because you have a free of mind, right? You're nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. So that's one advice I always tell the next generation because I teach entrepreneurship now for high schoolers. So, so what you said was tell high schoolers uh, to succeed early. It was the last thing I heard. Yeah, succeed or fail early, right? So they need to know both, right? So what happens is then they they can define it and if they succeed then they can do a lot of good things for the world right because now they have the bandwidth money name everything so i think entrepreneurship we succeeded at an early age uh, then you know uh, people like us what's you know we have done many things right but what does success mean to you today is it you succeed to an extent where you can say that i don't have to work from you know eight to six i don't have to worry about things i can still play golf on any given day and still do what i want to do right maybe be an entrepreneur, but now you're more of a mentor slash friend to a lot of these startups. So I think you can do all that when you succeed early. Is that what success means to you right now? Yeah, I think I can do like a lot of that, uh, 
my experience with angsters because I, I like the way they're fearless. Their knowledge is amazing. You know, they're go-getters. You give them something and they will come up with 10 different ways of solving a problem. So, you know, that's, that's, I feel that's very exciting. You know, I, I get excited when I see such kids. Now you talk about, you know, fail early as well. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say your biggest failure is and what did you learn from it? Um, maybe the way we think, right? That when we start, uh, we are worrying about how to run the business, you know, instead of focusing on what you're good at, right? That's one of the things I tell my angel group, right? I'm part of an angel group that we need to bring in expertise into any company we invest. The reason for that is when you have a subject matter expert, it becomes easy for the entrepreneur to focus on what he is. Uh, entrepreneur always comes with the idea. He doesn't know how to market. He doesn't know how to sell. He doesn't know how to you know, run the payrolls. All that experience is not there, but he, he tries to learn it because he don't have the help, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say that if we can bring in that, right? Well, that's where I felt that sometimes it takes a lot of effort and that becomes either, that defines your success or failure in the journey. So I would say that if you have that eco cycle, then it becomes easy for the entrepreneur to focus on what he's good at. Makes a lot of sense. Focus on what you're good at and bring the right resources around you. Sure. Without adding too much of cost, right? Then it boils down to where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially in startup, right? Right. So if you can network around it, right? So that's what we've been saying to, in fact, one of my ideas is to see how we can knock on to the doors of the startups instead of they reaching those doors. So saying, hey, what are your top three problems, right? Mm. right. So there are many startups in many, you know, whether it's ATDC, uh, village, you know, tech village, anywhere. You just go find the list, knock the doors and ask, hey, what help do you need? Where do you think uh, are your biggest challenges? I think that's, I would, that's, those are my takeaways saying that nobody even, you know, I was not able to reach out to anybody who, who could even think about it. You mm -hmm. know, because everybody is trying to say, no, no, you need to hire the best guy, but that comes with a price. But ultimately, I, I don't have the money. So it's it's a situation where, you know, if, if it's network, it helps each other to, flourish and then that's how these startups will become you know succeeding more than you know failing so really the power of a network and resources oh, yes over internal hiring and you know yep. kind of standard business practices right awesome um i'm curious what you know business one thing you know in this process of forming print form and bringing it to where it is today um happened that you did not expect I think the growth, right? Um, what we didn't expect was that, uh, which will be much faster, you know, uh, hiring people or the growth of getting business, right? So in this whole journey, I found out that the only way we can, uh, you know, grow is scale it, right? The scale was all about innovation, as I told you, mm -hmm. bringing in those right tools and help the people like, so in our line of business, the most difficult part is selling when somebody comes to the door and how, because the response time has to be quick. There are competitors who are trying to compete with us and a small $200 customer can become a million dollars. So your risks are very high if you don't treat them. If you see a Gmail or a Yahoo and you say, hey, I don't know whether this can be a prospect, you know, is a good prospect or is it going to give me a million dollar? If you do, you know, you start evaluating that person, maybe you're losing a big customer, right? So, and also the, the focus areas, like the time taken to create a code, time taken to create an invoice, you know, all those things which are more of a data work. So we took them away. We said, okay, one click, 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 it should be automated. And that helps the you know, sales guy to focus on what he's good at, right? It's a good problem to have. Now, if he's able to reach 15 customers in a day with all this data work, I would see that how can you reach 30 people now? It's a good problem for any company's growth, right? Mm -hmm. and for the individual growth. So instead of adding people, now you're adding technology, which will help them to grow. And in turn, it helps the company to grow. And your cash flow looks good at the end of the day. What are some indispensable tools or um, resources that you have that, um, you know, make it honestly indispensable for you to do what you're doing or your salespeople, your team to do what they're doing? So the, I think the research in every aspect of the business, right? If you look at digital marketing, uh, there are thousands of ways of doing out or reaching out. And we know that this is a big country and too many customers and you can't have business development people going around the country, right? So the only way we could reach out was through digital marketing. Now, 
even there, when you break it down, there are six or seven ways of doing it, right? Like you have meta tags for your organic searches, you have AdWords, you have email campaigns, social media, all those. Now, what is the best thing for you? I think one thing we did was we put a team uh, to do a research for six months. So we found out tools uh, which are going to be a subscription based and we will test more than one. Suppose, for example, if it's meta tag, we found out three tools which could tell me which meta tag is the one which is working. Mm -hmm. And based on the data, after six months, now we have our own uh, uh, blue book, I would call where we know, okay, for meta tags, I use this, for AdWords, I use this, for my competitors, keywords and competition, I use this tool. So I think that's the strength we have when we pick up something, right? If it look at digital marketing, that's what we did. And same thing we did with our sales. So if the salespeople came and said that I have a customer A, and how do we uh, reach out to more people? So what we did, we took that one customer who is, uh, you know, started small, became big. We went and found found out similar ten customers, right, or ten prospects. Mm -hmm. So now what happens is, and we built the content around it. So now when you actually look at it as a prospect, you say, okay, this is what I want. This is my need, and I'm looking at a content which has been already worked on, and that connects, right, and that's a memory which remains with you. So we're trying to be a little bit. You know, I would say creative and innovative in every aspect of the uh, business we do, right? Whether it's sales, digital marketing, uh, the way we, we follow up with the customer in terms of, you know, getting paid on time, right? So we, we are more innovative on those where it helps with the tools, right? So that's our strength. It sounds like you've brought in a lot of technology to really improve the processes of your business. Correct. So Today, if I, if, I, if I want to know what is my uh, return on investment on a, uh, ad which was click i have that tracking system which tells me how the customer came in whether it's a word of mouth or you know I, i'm able to track all that i'm able to track that and then also give my sales team people a, a forecast of you know leads based on the rating right so we have a color combination saying that it searches the moment you click and you come into our database it searches whether you are a new customer existing quote you know different levels and puts you based on the coloring we have. So if you're already a customer, then it puts you at the top three, top four. So that we want to respond back quickly. And there is a story to narrate, right? So I can start my conversation with you saying that, hey, we see that you already have bought some parts from us. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, are you part of the same team? Uh, did you talk to this person who placed an order? So what happens is the conversation is at a different level altogether. So there's a comfort zone between the pro new prospect and us because we already know that they have there are customers. So we start the conversation based on at what level they are in. So you use coloration to then help prioritize uh, right. response, essentially, and then the types of responses that need to go back out. Correct. Awesome. That sounds very, um, I don't know, very helpful, I guess, to your team to be able to have that kind of information and data before they go make a call. Also, we give them enough data. Like, for example, when I search for one customer, I'm able to tell them what is the size of the company, how many employees are there, what are the industries they focus on. So all that data is available to them. They don't have to go to any website, search for when they call the customer. So the highlights automatically were written some you know, Python script, which pulls up the data and puts it in front of you, right? So basically when somebody has data in front of them, the whole conversation with the other person is different because now you know that you're talking about them, which makes the other person feel you know, happy because now you've done your homework. Right. So. Absolutely. It's always yeah. better to know about your customer or potential sure. customer mm -hmm. rather than have them share it with you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're very process oriented, very technology, lots of tools. I'm curious, what's your favorite productivity hack for entrepreneurs? Productivity? Um, what's something you could share with others that might help save other people some time? I think the, um, when you write down, right, if you have five things you do in a day, what are the things which will help you to automate, right? So that I think will help your productivity because everybody has certain bandwidth in a day where you can put in your 100% and then it starts going down, right? By the eighth hour, maybe your energy is not the same or your brain is not working at the same pace at which you want it to work. So one is prioritizing what you want to do for the day and then find those tools to help you to automate some of them because there are a lot of you know tools available they're not expensive but it's just that you need to find the right match of how to you know help you mm -hmm. 
So very focused on automation. Right. What's one question you wish I'd asked you that I haven't? What is the reach of this podcast, right? How will it help different entrepreneurs talk and look at my inputs on automating their processes, which will create more success stories? You know, that is one question I would definitely want you to ask me, you know, what does this automation mean? Why I'm so passionate about automation? And will you tell my audience why you are so passionate about automation? I think it, it brings in a lot of discipline in the way business is done. And you're on, it's the thing is that you're continuously thinking different ways to get your customer into your door, right? Uh, the standard processes don't allow you to do that. And today, data, the data allows you to do that. Like, for example, if I have two years data, and I know when you came in as a customer last year, instead of you reaching out, if I give you a call two weeks before saying that, hey, listen, you had reached out to us last year, can I help you now? So that itself is a big thing for the other person, right? So that's only possible when you have those tools in place, which will help you to do all that. Like today, I think the business is being done a lot of on the connect now, right? It's not like earlier because now, earlier what used to happen was people used to not interact much because you would be, let's say in Bay Area, I'm in the East Coast, we used to never see each other. But with Zoom, one click, you see each other. So there is a connect, you know, face connect, you know whom you're interacting with. So what happens is with all these automations, it just helps you to you know, sell better, connect better, that relationship is built. And I think business is a lot of many a times business is done on the comfort and relationships, right? Mm-hmm. You talk a lot about relationships um, and networking and building those. Can you give me, you know, one or two ways in your career you have um, worked to build those relationships that's been really successful for you? What I was trying to say is whenever I meet anybody, um, whether it's to network or one-on-one meetings, uh, I never tend to ask business. Uh, with people, uh, no matter who they are. Um, I tend to, you know, uh, connect with them to understand what is it that they're expecting from that whole discussion? Is it that they have something on the table? Do they have any, you know, concerns which they are wanting to talk? And then, you know, I think the first meeting is all about just understanding what and why they are here to meet us, right? So, and then the second one, I would allow to talk about myself, about the company, what we do. And the third could be a meeting where you say, okay, now I understand your problem. I have a solution to it. What do you think about it? Right. So it's always good to wait uh, in business that the other person comes to you saying, can you help me instead of you always going and knocking because people don't like it. Then they feel that, Hey, uh, every time Malu calls me, I know what's the agenda, right? He just wants to ask for more business or wants to see how can I, get connected with the network of people he or she has. So I think that's something which I tell people don't ever do that, right? So I think that's one takeaway. And I would tell the entrepreneurs, I know it, it's the human tendency to jump on the opportunity, but I think waiting sometimes helps. I think you're right. You build a relationship first yeah. and then you can start figuring out how to help one another. Right. So, well, the show was called Beyond the Comfort Zone because I truly believe as entrepreneurs and leaders, it's important for us to get out of our comfort zones and try new things and grow um, to always get to the next stage um, in our life and our growth. So I'm curious, what is the next thing that you want to do that's outside your comfort zone? Be more innovative uh, again so that you know I can use that same time to help the budding entrepreneurs, right? So I think that's one thing I always look at. Um, if you if you see in the last seven days, at least six different new startups have reached out to me seeking help from nowhere. I, I don't know them. I haven't spoken to them. They connect on LinkedIn and they say, hey, this is where I need your help. So I think when they come to me, I need to still allocate the time. And that's only possible when I'm trying to finish up my work and still have that frame of mind and I have to prepare myself, right? So I think that's where I, I try to focus more on in the same amount of time, you know, because I can't stretch hours beyond certain hours, right? I don't want to lose out on the things I do, right? So at the end of the day, so I think it's good to work around what you have without affecting your primary thing, you know, what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds great. I really appreciate you taking the 
time to join me today on here and tell the world a little bit about yourself and the cool things that you are doing at print form and um, some of the really cool ideas around automation. So it's been great learning from you and uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Abby.